Hello and welcome back. And today we're going to talk about how other tradesmen can make your business just that little bit better. If you actually follow and believe all the hype of the stereotypical type, the electrician, that people actually think that electricians are like, where they've got wads of cash in their pocket, they turn up on site for an hour and charge for the whole day, and they never get their hands dirty. Now let's be honest, you're living in a dream world. I did actually turn up on site the other day, and then when I got out, I stood straight in a puddle, and I had to use a 50 pound nose to clear my foot off. And it took me ages for them 50s to dry out on the dashboard of my Range Rover. And let's be honest, electricians don't just hang around with electricians, we're not some sort of cult. Because it's a good idea to actually not to hang around with electricians. And in this podcast, I'm going to tell you the exact reasons why. Toolbox Talks for Electricians, helping electricians reduce stress, gain back time and earn more money. Hello, hello, hello and welcome back once again. I'm your host, Ben Poulter, an electrician who has a number of friends with all different sorts of trades. Builders, plasterers, ground workers, plumbers, carpenters, car salesmen, and even police officers. Yeah, there's a bit of a funny story about a police officer that I know, but I'll, I'll tell you about that later on. And the banter that goes around, it's believed that every trade hates every other trade. And electricians hate plumbers, plumbers hate electricians or builders. It's sort of, it's stereotypical that we hate each other. Yeah, because we do get on each other's nerves quite a lot. We get in each other's way when we're on site, especially when we're working on maybe a small site in a, a small domestic premises. But we have to work together on so many occasions. And it's probably a good idea to actually get on with each other rather than not. Not just to make it easier to get the job done, but it will mutually benefit the both of us. We're all in the same position. We're all trying to build a business for ourselves. And each profession, builders, plumbers, electricians, they're all skilled at what we do. Because I've tried fitting a rad, and it took me ages, and then it been leaked when I've done it. So I called a plumber, and he fitted five rads, and the fixed the one that I obviously bodge installed in half a day. He had the right tools and the right knowledge to be able to fit them rads properly. So yeah, I don't try and fit rads again because it's just a waste of my time. And this goes for all sorts of trades because as a gardener, at the summertime, you want to obviously tidy your garden up a bit, make it look a bit nicer because you're more likely to be spending more time in the garden in the summer. So you spend a, f a small fortune maybe going out to the wholesalers or if you love tools like a lot of tradesmen do, they'll get Makita kit or they'll get Milwaukee or DeWalt hedge trimmers that are battery because they've got the batteries already for them. I only know this, I've done this myself, I've got a Makita hedge trimmer and they'll spend a fortune on that equipment. But have you ever thought about maybe just employing a gardener to do a day's work in your garden and to get all the trimmings off and neat and tidy, they do it for a, a, a living so they know what they're doing and they take all the cuttings away with them. So it walks away lovely and tidy. It's a lot less stressful. So that's exactly what I do now, and I haven't really used my Makita hedge trimmer that basically costs the same as a day's labour as the gardener that comes around. So that was a waste of money. But as an electrician, you don't have any other options sometimes. You've got to work with the other trades. And you do get a big variety of different tradesmen and how they work. You get them absolute idiots who just really want to get the job done, their job done, they don't care about anyone else, they just want to get their bit done and get the hell out of there. Now these guys, yeah, you don't want to have them working in your house, so there's probably not much of a point in being friends with them. But if you make that little bit more conscious effort to maybe get along with other trades, like with plasterers, if you tuck your cables inside a box, because I know for a fact that they love to skim straight over, they don't want to be having to tuck the cables and if they skim up to it, it makes their life harder. So if you tuck your cables in the box so they can skim straight over, hopefully they won't skim the plaster over and cover the box up and make a nice neat finish so you've got to even find the box later on. That's basically what a lot of plasterers do, yeah. But some plasterers, they'll cut it out nice and neat. They'll do you a favour because you tuck your cables in to make their job easier. So they'll, in return, basically make your job a bit easier. And then if you're working in a property, say with a, a plumber, and you've got it there, they're doing the whole central heating and you're doing the whole rewire. Then to check with them, have a little conversation to say, look, where are you going to run your pipes, mate? Let's keep out of each other's way because I don't want my pipes laying on top of 
I don't want my cables laying on top of pipes and he doesn't want his pipes laying on top of cables. So it's just these small things that can lead to a bigger picture. And the benefit of doing work for other tradesmen, like I've been around other trades pair, like builders houses before, where you give them a quote, they know how much your skill's worth. So when you give them a quote, they don't try and knock you down or bargain with you. They're quite happy to say, yep, okay, I accept that quote, that sounds reasonable. They know what they value, what you're gonna do for them. And if you do work for like a main contractor, which is a builder, possibly on an extension on a property, it's nine times out of 10 that that builder is putting in a bit higher price for the electrics of putting a bit on top. That's, that's how it works, that's how it works in the building trade. If that builder gets an electrician or a plumber in, they put a certain percentage on top, or they've put in a price for the electrics to be done. And well, they're hoping that it fits the same quote what you give them. Because I swear that believe, um, I do believe the builders, they just pick a number out of thin air for maybe the electrics because they haven't got such a clue sometimes. I've noticed that some builders these days are saying, look man, it's, it's costing a lot more than I put, put on the quote. And I was like, yes, but the customer wanted LEDs. They wanted USB sockets and these materials cost more. It's not necessarily my labor's gone up. It's the materials that you're requesting that you've told them that they can have, the LEDs and all the nice fancy stuff. This is why it's costing so much. But nine times out of 10, that builder probably just goes in there and he's completely undercut the price of the electrics because he didn't realize that, yeah, it's not gonna meet regulations and you need to put a new fuse board in. Or they're putting a stupidly extortionate amount and they'll say, yeah, do what you want. I've got plenty of money in it. So then these builders are obviously making a good amount of profit from the work that you're doing for them as well. So this is the reason I believe that builders, when I've done work for them, have gone around the house and given the quote for the work they want to be doing, or the, they want doing even, they'll pay you whatever you ask for. They're not fussed. They've made a lot of money over, out of you over the time through working with them. So they'll they'll be respectful sort of thing. They'll get, they'll get you a bacon roll, and they'll give you a few beers maybe at the end of the job. They're quite appreciative, I think, builders are. This is what I've noticed in my experience. So if you take that tradesman banter out of obviously hating each other, then it's probably a quite a good idea to be friends, or at least just get along. So if you think about it, what's the most common thing you'll say to a customer after doing a bit of work? You say, yeah, you'll need to get a plaster in to like, make good the mess that I've created. Because obviously as electricians, we need to make holes in ceilings, we need to make chases, we need to cut out the boxes in the walls. You need a plaster to come along and fill in. It might be a little bit of hassling, it might upset the customer sometimes, saying, oh what, you're not gonna make good? But I cannot plaster to save my life. I've tried, I've tried to give it a go, to try and help someone else, saying, yeah, I'll, I'll cover the chases, I'll make good. Yet it's not as easy as what you think. It is a skilled trade to get a decent finish on plastering. Because my dad used to be a plasterer. And I had to call him once when I had a go. I tried to plaster for an ex-girlfriend's uh, an ex-girlfriend's bedroom wall that wanted it plastering, couldn't find a plasterer. Said I'll give it a go, watch a couple of YouTube videos. Yeah, it didn't work out. I didn't have a clue. So I had to call my dad up and said, how the hell do you get like a glass finish, a lovely finish on a bit of plasterer? Well, I ain't got a clue that you had to let it go off for maybe an hour or two hours and then flick a load of water on it. Yeah, it weren't my cup of tea. It sounded like a completely different skill that I wasn't interested in learning, to be honest. So if you get a good plasterer, you're gonna recommend them to your customers. But then that plasterer, he does a load of work in people's houses. He does a load of work for different builders. He's in the trade. He sees so many different tradesmen. And what's the conversation that comes up sometimes? Does anyone know a good Sparky? Well, he's gonna recommend you to his customers too. And it's probably one of the best ways to be able to grow a business is word of mouth. And I don't think this just goes for maybe plumbers, builders, plasterers. Because when you do work for maybe a car salesman, their job is to have a conversation with a customer and become their best friend. Obviously they want to sell them a car, so they've got to talk about their life and they just get friends with them. And if it's ever mentioned in that conversation that yeah, I'm getting a kitchen fitted and basically I'm, st I'm struggling to find an electrician. Well, that car salesman will recommend you. I know this because this has happened to me over the past 20 years sort of thing. I know car salesmen, I know builders, brickies, ground workers, and they do recommend you to their family and friends. And it will grow into something that you basically can't stop. You'll get calls all the time. If you hear of electricians, they say, yeah, you don't answer your phone in a day because you can't get anything done. 
You get people calling you constantly because maybe maybe asking you questions. Oh, I've just fitted this light. I'm not sure how. You can't tell them over the phone because well, some people expect it. Some people want you to say, just put the red in the blue or in the brown, and you can't. It's, it's difficult to do it, or they want to FaceTime you. I've got friends that. Sometimes I have before said, look, man, please just, I'll, I'll pop round tomorrow. Leave that light off overnight. You're going to kill yourself. Leave it, and I'll come round and sort it out. Because you can't tell them how to do it over the phone. Because what if you hear a big bang, they fall off the steps. You're going to have to go around there anyway. You'll find that everybody needs an electrician at some point. And being a good one will make the customer not only keep your number, but it will also make them tell all their friends as well. If you're a nice person, I take my dog with me everywhere I go. And he's like an icon of my business. They said, Ben the electrician with the dog. And they talk about a dog. They come out, they maybe meet the dog in the van or sometimes even invite him into the house, the kids to play with him. He's a grumpy kid, so he doesn't play with kids much anymore. But it's like, a, it helps the customer remember you, without a doubt. I don't know what I'm going to do when he's just sits at home and doesn't want to go to work anymore, but he's my, my like my, my little sidekick, shall I say. Because it was just the, the other day that I was around a customer's house, but the lights in the conservatory, they haven't worked for a little while. So I took them down, and I found that one of the cables had been trapped in one of the brackets that the previous electrician had maybe installed. And also the terminals, for some reason, none of them were tight. I don't understand why electricians should work out of their wrists. They need to do a nice tight connection. That obviously matters. So I asked the customer, I said, who, who did this work last? Who left it like this? And he said, yeah, we had an electrician out and uh, he couldn't work out why it kept tripping. So he just disconnected them and said, yeah, you can't have a lights in the conservatory. Well, I can only imagine that the tripping was maybe because of that cork cable or a loose connection. But he had, it gone round, he disconnected them in all the lights and in the switch. Which ended a day, if you were dis disconnect that circuit, there was a live neutral and an earth at the switch. You could have just dis disconnected it at the switch and that would have eradicated any faults that you're gonna get on that circuit. Which, I don't know, you get some electricians out there that are probably unsure what they're doing so they go over the top and it ends up making a mess of things when you could have just basically fixed the problem and tested it to make sure that it works. I don't know. But them lights have been like that for quite a while. And that electrician was never called again to that property to do any work. And it wasn't until that I was recommended to them that they thought about getting them fixed. They thought, oh yeah, this guy's all right. He's quite good. He's good at what he does. So can we see if we can check out this fault that the other electrician that couldn't work out? And obviously I did. But that customer, I got recommended to by a hairdresser. So once again, another trade that can recommend you. And then talking about other trades, without going into too much detail, I was arrested a little while ago. Well, not a little while ago, it was, I say a little while, it's probably about 10 years, about 10 years ago. And I was taken to the police station and put in the cells before an interview. And if you've ever been there before, you must know how it goes. You, you spend a little while in the cells and then they interview you, interview you. But while you're going into the cells, you have to take your shoes off, your laces out. And you have to empty your pockets and fill out all these questions. And the police officer was asking him all these questions and said, what is your occupation? So I said to him, I said, um, I'm an electrician, mate. I did the wiring for your garden lights a little while ago. And he just laughed and he said he understood. He was just trying to be professional and didn't want to say that he knew me, which I completely understood because it was also a little bit embarrassing for me as well, getting arrested. Like, it's not a scallywag. I'm not a naughty person really but um yeah so he was just it was fine with it and i was not charged and i was let go in the end because it was a complete misunderstanding however i must have started a conversation inside the cop shop because it wasn't until a few days later that a policewoman called me up to replace some lights in her house so every scenario there is a a, a good I would call it a good, there's a sun on the horizon, or whatever you call it, there's a saying there somewhere, I just cannot remember at the moment. But there's a good thing to come out of it. I got the conversation started inside that police station, he goes, oh yeah, he's a sparky, he actually probably did a good job in my garden. Well, I guess get his number, because he had his number in, my, in, in his phone. And yeah, she need an electrician, and my name come up in conversation. 
maybe the roundabout way of being in the police station, but it was fantastic. I was the first thought of his mind when he was talking about maybe someone need an electrician. So keeping your business and your customer, uh, your business in front of the customer's mind when someone says, "Yeah, I need I need an electrician," that that is priceless to keep you on on your mind of your customers all the time. When someone says electrician, they think straight away, "Yeah, Ben, yeah, Ben." That is the best way you can, and word of mouth, that is the best way you can obviously grow your business. So this is why that I've created a ten emails. I call them email nails, and they're emails that I send to customers, let them know, letting them know the sort of things that modern technology they can have, maybe like a USB socket, or the smart central heating, how that will save them energy these days. That's, that's a bit of great one, I'll put a few of them in, them in, because it's not just Hive and Nest anymore. There's loads of different heating controls that you can use with your smartphone. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below, so you can get your hands on it too. So until next time, I'll see you again. Box Talks for Electricians. My name is Ben Poulter, your host, and I've worked in the electrical trade from the age of 19 years old. And now being at the ripe old age of 41, I've had sort of around 20 years in the trade, and I've worked all over the world, 